All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of IMO. And today we are going to be reviewing my Premier League predictions from the start of the season, seeing how many I got right and how many I got wrong. And there's a couple of uh, pretty bad ones in there. So, my Premier League predictions for the 2015-2016 season. We're going to go through them from the bottom to the top and uh, assess how well I did. Now, YouTube's been kind of screwing me over on this one because a lot of you guys have seen my Premier League predictions video like in the last sort of month as opposed to when I did it like last summer because YouTube started suggesting it as a video to people because it knew I had a mare on the predictions. I don't know how YouTube figured it out, but YouTube's been mugging me off, basically. So loads of people have been tweeting me saying, uh, you know, look what you did in the predictions, you weren't very good at them, were you? I actually tweeted it out on the final day when Leicester won the league and said, look, I might have got this wrong a bit. Uh, I definitely wasn't the only one who was surprised to see a lot of what happened this year in the Premier League, but we're going to work our way through it and, and see where it all went wrong. Starting off at the bottom, I predicted all three of the promoted clubs to go back down. Uh, in 20th, I had Watford. In 19th, I had Bournemouth. And in 18th, I had Norwich, OK? Um, yeah, didn't get that one right. Actually, Bournemouth and Watford had really good seasons. Uh, Watford obviously got rid of their manager in the end, but they did well. They were safe pretty early on in the season. Bournemouth did fantastic under Eddie Howe, picking up some big wins in the process, so they did well. Uh, Norwich did go down. I thought they were going to go in 18th. They actually went down in 19th, so I was one position wrong on that one. But Watford finished 13th, I thought they finished 20th, so I was seven wrong on that. And Bournemouth finished 16th instead of 19th, so I was three wrong on that. Obviously, only getting one of the three relegated clubs is not great. Let's look at the rest of the bottom half of the table now. And straight away in 17th, we have the big one. Yes, that's right. I predicted Leicester City to come 17th in the league as opposed to first. They won the league. This is by far the worst prediction of my Premier League predictions video. And let me give it some context, OK? No one thought Leicester were going to win the league. I don't care who you are, you find me any pundit, expert or YouTuber like me that predicted Leicester to win the league at the start of the season, I'll find you a liar. Okay, no one thought it was going to happen. However, I could have predicted this better. Yes, because if you look at the stats, Leicester did have a really good end to the season, uh, last season. They actually were the best team for the whole of 2015 calendar year in England, not just the, the second part of it. So where I predicted them to come 17th, I, think, I didn't think they'd be able to sustain that. I thought they were going to struggle. They changed manager. I thought Ranieri, you know, I didn't back Ranieri. Most people didn't. Gary Lineker, famous Leicester fan, didn't back Ranieri. He thought it was a joke appointment. He obviously saw the error of his ways. Now he loves him. Everyone loves him. Fair play to Ranieri. All us doubters were made to look very, very silly. So, yeah, if I had my time again, I would have obviously predicted Leicester to come higher, but I never would have predicted them to come first because that was inexplicable. No one can explain that. Premier League has always been a great league for upsets and there's always four or five teams that could win it, but never before has a team like Leicester won the league, a team that was relegation favourites, a team that was 5,000 to 1 to win the league in the bookies. And they actually did it. And as a result, even the worst team in the league will never be 5,000 to 1 again. It's changed the way bookies are going to do the odds for title winners for a long time. So well done, Leicester. You mugged us all right off. I had Aston Villa to finish 16th. I thought they were going to give Tim Sherwood a little bit more time, maybe. And he could have turned it round. They didn't. They obviously came 20th, so I was four wrong on that. I had Sunderland to finish 15th, when really they finished 17th. So I wasn't far off on this one. I knew they'd survive, but be close to the relegation battle. Uh, so I'm not too displeased with that one. I think that's a decent selection for me. Now, this is the first one I got right. I had West Brom to finish 14th, and they did finish 14th. So I'm happy with that. It's actually quite hard to get a team in the exact right position, especially lower down the table. So I'll take that. I had Crystal Palace to finish 13th. They finished 15th. Again, only two places out, so I don't mind it. I had Swansea to finish 12th. They finished 12th. I got this one exactly right, just like West Brom. So there's a couple of decent predictions in here. I had Southampton to finish 11th. They actually finished 6th. So I was five wrong on this one. They had a really decent finish to the season and a couple of good spells throughout. Ronald Kerman did a fantastic job this season, as did the likes of Pella, Shane Long, Tadic, Mane, loads of players were unbelievable. Fraser Forster in goal. So fair play to Southampton, you proved me wrong on that one. They actually ended up beating West Ham to a European spot in the league, so well done. Okay, now let's look at who I had to finish between 10th and 5th. Now this next one's pretty bad. I had Newcastle to finish 10th, and they finished 18th. They got relegated. Why did I think they were gonna finish 10th? 
I thought they did some good signings, personally. I thought they brought in Mitrovic, a young, promising Serbian striker. I, I knew he had good potential. I'll be honest, I didn't know as much about his kind of mental side. The fact that he had the ability to score and get sent off in the same breath. If I'd known that, I might have changed my mind. Uh, Wijnaldum, I, I knew good things about him. I'd heard a lot about him. I'd seen him a little bit. I think he had an OK season, considering Newcastle went down. But I thought he'd maybe make more of an impact at Newcastle. But ultimately, I was very wrong on this one. This is one of my biggest regrets, having Newcastle to finish 10th when really they finished 18th. But they definitely had too good a team to go down, especially after they made the January signings of Townsend and Shelby and whatnot. Like, it is bad from then they went down. Other, other clubs, you know, like Aston Villa's squad was very weak. And the fact they sold Delph and Benteke last summer meant they were almost... Yeah, it was going to be difficult to keep them up, but Newcastle should have done a lot better than they did. My prediction is probably about right as to where they should have finished, like with the squad they had. Maybe they should have finished 12th, 13th, but they never should have got relegated. In 9th, I had Stoke City. They finished 9th the season before. I thought they were going to do it again this season, and they did. This was my third accurate prediction, so I got that one right. They brought in some decent players in the summer, Shakiri included, but... I knew they weren't going to make the next step up to European football, so I'm happy with that. In 8th, I had West Ham, and I ended up being very close on this because West Ham finished 7th. It looked for a long time like West Ham would finish a lot better than 7th, so I could have been very wrong on this one, but only being one wrong, I obviously had an idea about my club, about the signings we'd made, about Bilic's ability as a manager, so I was quite happy with my West Ham prediction. I did, however, have Everton to finish 7th when really they came 11th. I think, again, much like Newcastle, Everton squad... Uh, didn't do as well as they should have. You know, Lukaku, Coleman, John Stones, decent, decent players in their squad. They really should have done better. Roberto Martinez lost his job over it in the end. And I actually think on paper, the Everton squad is at least as good as the West Ham squad. So the fact that they didn't you know, get near us in the league, I think that's a poor performance from Everton. So I stand by my prediction for them, but obviously it was wrong. Now, I had Tottenham to finish sixth, and they actually impressed me big time finishing third. They should really have finished second if it wasn't for that final day collapse against relegated Newcastle. So why did I think they'd finish sixth? I mean, they had a very young squad. I, I didn't anticipate Deli Alley would hit the ground running like he did. I knew he was good. I'd heard about him at MK Dons, but I thought it'd take a little bit longer. I wasn't sure if Harry Kane would be able to replicate his goal-scoring success of the season before. He did. He impressed me as well. People like Toby Alderweireld obviously was a signing he, he'd come on loan from Southampton the year before he hit the ground running at Spurs was an awesome player Danny Rose blossomed massively Carl Walker returned to form so their players stepped up the, the youth part of their squad came of age in many ways and really really went up a level so Tottenham impressed me I got that one fairly wrong now I had Liverpool to finish fifth they actually finished eighth why did I get this one wrong well they had Brendan Rodgers as manager when I made this prediction I thought Benteke was going to do a lot better than he did. I thought he was going to score bags of goals at Liverpool, but he didn't really do it. I still believe in Benteke as a player, and I'm someone I wouldn't mind taking at West Ham, to be honest. I know there's this kind of like thing online about making jokes about him not being able to score anything, but I think he's shown over the last few years he is a decent striker. He didn't get as many starts as he probably... You could argue he should have got at Liverpool, and I think he would have got more goals if he'd had more starts there, but he did miss a few chances he shouldn't have missed, and he got this kind of monkey on his back, but hopefully he'll get it off. Uh, maybe he'll do well for Belgium in the Euros, I don't know, but yeah, Benteke didn't really deliver. Um, obviously, they had a little bit of you know, a change of the guard where they got Klopp coming for Rodgers and that took a little bit of adjustment. Rodgers didn't have great form before he came out. Klopp did really well in the Cups with Liverpool. The fact they stayed in the Europa League for so long would have hindered their league performances a little bit. So maybe they could have finished higher if it wasn't the Europa League. They definitely played some very inexperienced teams towards the end of the Premier League campaign because of the Europa League. So yeah, they could have probably done a little bit better and got closer to my prediction. Now I had Manchester United to get fourth place and they only missed out on fourth on goal difference, right? So I was pretty much as close as you can be to getting a prediction right, but not getting it right with that one. Uh, LVG ended up losing his job over, not getting Champions League football despite winning the FA Cup. Like I said, they were very close, and I'm happy with my prediction there. I had Man City to finish third. They actually finished fourth, so I was only one wrong on that one. You know, I didn't tip them as champions. I didn't think they'd even get top two. Um, and I was right in that regard. I just got them one place wrong, so I'm happy with that. And I got Arsenal to finish second completely right. I think I know Arsenal pretty well. I've talked about Arsenal a lot on the channel. I've got a lot of Arsenal friends. I've followed them closely over the years. I, I, I tipped them to get second. And also, if you remember, when the uh, summer transfer window closed, I even went out on a limb and was so sure Arsenal wouldn't win the league because they hadn't signed any big signings that I said, as long as they don't go and make a big signing in January, I guarantee they won't win the league. And if they do, I'll get a Mesut Ozil tattoo. So I put my body on the line for that prediction. And I got it right because they didn't win the league. They were 10 points off the eventual winners 
Leicester. So they were nowhere near winning the league in the end, despite finishing second. You know, I'd love to see them win the league again one day. Uh, obviously, West Ham would be my preference, but I do like Arsenal, but they still need to make significant investments. They've already bought Chaka, and that's the sort of signing we'll talk about when I actually make my Premier League predictions for next season. I'll do that you know, later on in the transfer window. But yeah, Arsenal finishing second is a great achievement for them, considering it's been a long time since they finished that high in the league. Although this season of all seasons was the year that clubs like Arsenal really should have challenged the title because uh, no one seemed to want to win it apart from Leicester. And now we should talk about Leicester. Okay, I obviously didn't have them to win the league. I had Chelsea to win the league. Uh, they didn't finish first, they finished 10th. So I was nine places out with Chelsea. Again, just like the Leicester one, no one saw that coming. No one thought Mourinho was going to collapse. I mean, imagine if you'd predicted not only that Chelsea weren't going to win the league, but they were going to finish 10th. And by a year later, after winning the league, Mourinho would be managing Manchester United. No one could have seen that coming. I mean, it's crazy. A lot of different things happened at Chelsea that, that added to that, you know. This whole thing with the doctor, Eva Carnero, I think that was actually a massive part of why he lost the Chelsea dressing room and couldn't buy a win. Um, and yeah, I mean, football's crazy. Leicester won the league, Chelsea finished 10th. You know, I've got no problem with getting the Chelsea and Leicester predictions so badly wrong, because everyone did. No one knew it would happen. But fair play, you know, I could have done a little bit better on some of them. I only got four of the 20 right. There was probably a couple more that I was only one or two out on. Overall, I'd say it was a failure because despite the fact I was quite close on a lot of the clubs, I was so far off on the winners and I didn't get the Chelsea one right. The only saving grace for me is, like I say, I don't think anyone predicted that to happen. The question is, how will my predictions do next season? I'm looking forward to making my next Premier League predictions video. Let's also remind ourselves, I did get all my other European predictions right. I predicted PSG to win the French League. I predicted Juventus to win the Serie A, Bayern Munich to win the German, and obviously um, Barcelona to win La Liga. Now, I'm not taking a lot of credit for that. The fact that those leagues are so predictable helped me make those predictions correctly. The Premier League is so much harder. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I just wanted to review these predictions because a lot of you have been tweeting me the video and actually posted on the predictions video uh, recently, even though it's an old video, because you've been sort of saying, well done, Spence, you didn't really do well on this one, did you? And that's what makes it interesting. You know, you put yourself on the line, you make your predictions, they either get them right or you get them very wrong. And I love it. I don't mind getting them wrong. It shows you where my mind was at a certain time and how quickly the things that happen within football can change your mind. Like, it is crazy the, the amount of levels and different things that are going on in this beautiful, beautiful game. And that's why I love it so much. And that's why I can't wait to the next predictions video. But for now, make sure you drop a like on this one if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. Leave me a comment below with how you think I did generally on the predictions. Of course, if you want to check out the original predictions video, there is a link in the description or you can click the I in the top corner. But for now, I'll see you when you're older. Until next time, don't go change it.